How do everyone dead here? I'm here to teach you how to do King's Fall as fast as humanly possible. So let's get right into it. First up, welcome to the first semi encounter. Opening the gates. For this encounter, you'll need to split your team up into three teams of two one on left, one on right, and one on middle. Left and right teams will be doing pretty much the exact same thing, just on different sides of the arena. And on each of these teams, there will be one runner and one defender. The team in the middle will just be opening up doors and doing basic ad control. The stars encounter have your runners pick up the orbs in the middle. Once this happens, the taken orb will go ahead and spawn. Just go ahead and shoot the blight in the middle to take it down. Once that happens, ads will spawn. Just go ahead and clear them out. Once they're out, those runners will need to go ahead and bank their relic at the statue with the hive symbol. You'll need to bank these at roughly around the same time. If you don't, your relic will disappear from your hand and you'll have to repick them up. Once these are done, everyone will need to go down their respective sides. Left team will go left and right team will go right. You'll need to go ahead and find your relics on your side. Wait for all teams to be on their spots before picking them up. These relics are timed. Once everyone's ready, just go ahead and pick them up and the defender will need to open the door for the runners to get back in the middle and defenders in middle will need to open the door so runners can go bank their relics you'll have six set of relics to bank here's an old map showing where those are once you've dunked your final relic just go ahead and clear the ads out in the court of oryx and wait for the portal to open once it opens you can go on to the next encounter Welcome to Totos. For this encounter, you need to split your team up into two teams of three, one team on left and one team on right. These teams will be doing the exact same thing, just on their respective sides. And the jobs are plate, balcony, and totems. The stars encounter have players on totems pick up their brand. Once this happens, they'll need to immediately run underneath the totem. If they don't get to it fast enough, or if ads kill them and nobody's underneath the totem to stop it, you'll have roughly 5 to 10 seconds to get somebody underneath there or it's an instant wipe. If you die while having the brand, you'll need to repick it up. This brand stops the totem from continuously hurting you underneath it. Once these players get to their totems, they'll need to go ahead and kill ads to get stacks of Deathsinger's power. Stronger foes will give you higher stacks, and while all this is going on, You'll also have a timer, lasting roughly 30 seconds. And once this timer runs out, you'll die. To make sure this doesn't happen, you'll need person on balcony to go ahead and kill a wizard. Once this wizard's down, a Taken Knight will spawn. Kill this Taken Knight as fast as you can. Once that happens, they'll drop a relic. You'll need to pick this up as fast as you can and start heading over to the person on totems. The brand claimer is used to transfer the brand from whoever's on totems to the person who has the brand claimer. You'll need to use your action button to go ahead and do this. Once that happens, whoever claimed the brand will now be on totems, and whoever was on totems will now run to plate, so they can go ahead and deposit their Death Singer's power. Now whoever was on plate will go ahead and jump to balcony and get ready to do the same process that the person did before. You're going to rinse and repeat this entire cycle. Occasionally in the middle of transferring players, there'll be an unstoppable ogre spawning in the middle. Rinse and repeat until the encounter is completed, and get ready for the next encounter, War Priest. Welcome to War Priest. For this encounter, you need to split your team up into three teams of two. One on left, one on right, and one on middle. And there are two main jobs for this encounter. Damage and floaters. And out of the six players, you'll only need two floaters, preferably somebody from left and right team. The stars encounter, you need someone staying on each of the plates on their side. Once all three plates have been activated, ads will start pouring into the room. After some time, Revenant Knights will spawn on each side of the arena. Go ahead and take care of them. Once all these knights have been taken care of, the central plate will begin to glow green. You need somebody in middle to stand on this plate. Whoever's standing on middle plate will need to look at either the left or right obelisk to see which one of these has a bright glow on them. Only the person that's standing on the plate can see this glow. This white glow will tell you which plate will be first in the order. If neither left or right obelisk is glowing, then the first one in the order will be middle plate. Once you know which side's first in the order, jump off the plate and have that first plate jump on theirs so they can read out the next one in the order. And left can only see the right obelisk glow and right plate can only see the left obelisk glow. If you step on the plates out of order or too early, all plates will have fire on them, dealing damage to anyone on top and you'll have less time to get the sequence right. If this invisible timer hits zero, it's an instant wipe. Once you've hit the final order in the sequence, whoever's standing on that final plate will get the brand of the initiate. All people doing damage will need to be inside this aura to do any damage to War Priest. And while damage phase is happening, whoever's holding the brand of the initiate will have a timer. You'll need to count this out. Once this timer hits zero, you'll die and damage phase will be over. To stop this from happening, you'll need floors to look for Taken Knights. Wherever the final plate was in the sequence, there will be no Taken Knight spawning there. So floors will need to go to the other two locations and look for a Taken Knight. Once one of the floaters finds a Taken Knight, they'll need to take this guy out as fast as you can and pick up the brand of the claimer and get inside the aura. Once whoever's holding the brand of the initiate gets the count of five 
or even maybe three if you feel comfortable enough, go ahead and use the brand of the claimer to go ahead and take the brand of the initiate. This will extend damage phase by another couple seconds. And while this is going on, the other floater will go ahead and do the same thing with their knight killing it, picking up the brand of the claimer, and getting ready to take the brand of the initiate. The brand of the initiate will have three stacks. Once you go ahead and eat all three stacks, if that timer hits zero, whoever's holding the brand won't die. Damage phase will be over and you'll need to hide behind the nearest obelisk so the war priest white mechanic does it well wipe you. Anyone not behind this obelisk will die. Once the white mechanic is over, it'll disintegrate that obelisk so you can't use it again. Now everyone will go back to their positions and start clearing ads again. Once war priest is below half health, taking will begin the spawn and your revenant knights will spawn on the plate. You have four damage phases to take out the War Priest. If you don't get him on that final phase, it's a wipe. Once War Priest is taken care of, get ready for the next encounter, Golgoroth. Welcome to Golgoroth. For this encounter, you need to split your team up into two teams of three. One team on left, and one team on right. And there are two main jobs for this encounter. Damage and gaze holders. Preferably have one gaze holder on left and right team. The start of this encounter, shoot the ball of light in the middle. Once this happens, Golgoroth will spawn and ads will start pouring into the arena. Go ahead and clear out all ads. There may be some stragglers in the back of the room. Once you've made sure all ads are cleared, go ahead and get in position. Damage to you should be next to the ball of light on L1. And the gaze holder from left team should be on the bridge getting ready to get the gaze. Once everyone's ready, go ahead and shoot down the pool and gaze holder should, should shoot the crit spot on his back. Once this happens, just run down the stairs, go ahead and rotate Golgoroth so the team down the pit can go ahead and shoot his crit spot on his stomach. Now a person with gaze will have a timer. You'll need to count this down so the other gaze holder can get ready to take it from you. Once they take it from you, Go ahead and run back up to the bridge on your side and get ready to take the gaze from that person. Now damage team. When the pool is on the ground, everyone will need standing inside this pool to get the most damage to Gogora. And you'll also need to be paying attention to when the gaze holders are getting ready to switch. When that count reaches 5, start shooting the next ball of light right next to you to get ready to continue damage phase. These balls will spawn in a zigzag pattern starting from L1 going all the way to R6. And in the middle of damage, one of those players in the pool will go ahead and get unstable light. What you need to do is run towards Gogoroth. This will deal massive damage to Gogoroth, making this encounter slightly easier. If at any time one of the gaze holders dies or fails to transfer his gaze, whatever remaining balls of light will be added to the tablet of ruin in the back of the room. If the tallies reaches 6, that's an instant wipe. Once you finish damage on R6, everyone will jump out of the pit and get ready to go back and clear out more adds. You'll rinse and repeat this process until Gogoroth is down. Now get ready for the next encounter, Sisters. Welcome to Sisters. This encounter is actually pretty straightforward. What you need to do is split your team up into two teams of three. These teams will be located on close plates and far plates. And there are two main jobs for this encounter. Floaters and plates. And plates are labeled L1, R1, L2, R2. To start this encounter, you'll be looking for a Revenant Knight. This will be the starting plate. Once you find this plate, go ahead and take out the Knight and jump on the plate. Let's start the encounter and a timer will pop up. You'll have roughly two minutes to get this entire process going and done. If it hits zero and you're not ready, you'll wipe. After that person jumps on the first plate, someone will randomly be torn between dimensions. Go ahead and call out what your position was, so that floaters can go ahead and cover for you. Whoever's torn between dimensions will need to head to the first plate. Once they're on, you'll need to look for a floating relic on one of the other three plates, and call out where it's located, so that the person on that plate will can go ahead and jump on. Once that happens, this will spawn transparent platforms between these two plates. The person who's torn between dimensions will need to jump on these platforms and pick up this relic. As soon as the person picks up this relic, everyone needs to jump off their plates. Because as soon as the relic's picked up, the plates will burst in the flames, damaging anyone on top of them. And you'll need to look for the next plate glowing green to start the sequence over again. You'll need to do this three times. On the final pickup, whoever's torn between the dimensions will need to manually pick up this last relic. Once they have it, they'll be jumping to one of the sisters, preferably the one who's not glowing green, and steal their brand. While this is going on, everyone else should get ready for damage. What you need to do is stand on the little ledge across and below the sister. Once the sister's brand has been taken, go ahead and join your teams on this little ledge and start dishing out damage. Whatever remaining time is on the timer was exactly how long you'll have for damage, so the faster you are, the longer you'll have a damage phase. If you don't kill the sister, it's okay. Just go ahead and stay on this ledge with your team so everyone's in the aura. If anyone's outside the aura, they're gonna die from the white mechanic. Once your screen's no longer playing CSGO, you can go ahead and get back on plates and prepare to do process again. Bridge and repeat until both sisters are down. Now get ready for the final encounter, Oryx. Welcome to Oryx. This encounter is actually very similar to the previous one. So you'll have the same teams in the same spots and people doing the exact same thing. The stars encounter walk up to the blight in the middle. This will call Oryx onto the field. Once that happens, ants will start spawning into the arena and taken knights will spawn on top of plates. 
go ahead and clear everything out. Once everything's cleared out, Oryx will either go to the left or right side and pick one of the starting plates. Once Oryx slams on this plate, it'll start the glow green. Have the person assigned to this plate jump on top of it. Once it's on top of it, someone will randomly be torn between dimensions. Have the person that's been torn jump on the starting plate. And just like last encounter, and one of the other three plates will have a relic. Just call out where this is so you can spawn transparent plates at the torn person go ahead and reach the relic. While all this is going on, ogres will spawn counterclockwise from where the starting plate is. Every time you kill an ogre, they'll drop a blight. And a light eater knight will spawn on the opposite side of the arena from where you killed this ogre. You'll need to kill four ogres and four knights. If any of these light eater knights reach one of the blights, they'll eat it. So you'll need to take care of these guys with extreme prejudice. You'll need as many of these bombs as possible to get the most out of damage phase. Once the person who's torn between the mentions reaches the first relic, immediately jump off your plate and look for the next plate that's glowing green. This will be the next starting location. You need to pick up three pieces of the relic. On the last relic, you need to manually pick it up, and then you'll be taking this to the knight that's, that should be somewhere in the middle. And just like last encounter, you'll be taking his brand. Once you've taken his brand, go ahead and kill the knight and hang out in the middle. Everyone else during this time needs to get off plate and stand near their bombs. Once you see a message pop up that says Orcs calls upon the darkness, get inside your bombs. You'll have to wait roughly 5 seconds for your bomb to be active. Once you see your name pop up, go ahead and run inside the aura in the middle. Anyone that's outside this aura when the bombs go off will die. Once all bombs are detonated, go ahead and do hard DPS to Oryx. Shoot the giant crit spot on his chest. Once damage phase is over, he'll move back to the front of the ship and do one of two attacks. They'll either fly back and start spawning mortars. During this time, you'll need to run around your designated areas, so people who are designated on plates will need to run around their plates and floaters will need to run around their designated areas, usually up and down the center area, making sure not to hit each other. Once he flies back, it's over. And the other attack Oryx can do is that he'll summon a Blight. This Blight will pull one player in at a time, and the people that are inside will need to go ahead and kill the Shade of Oryx. And then for the people that are outside the Blight, they'll need to go ahead and do some ad control. If any of these ads go inside the Blight, they'll be in the Shade of Oryx's arena, going after any players inside. If you fail to kill the Shade of Oryx and everyone's inside, the Shade will go ahead and call Doxology, and that's a wipe. Once you kill the Shade of Oryx, Everyone get back in position and getting ready to do this entire process over again. You'll have four damage phases to do as much damage to Oryx as possible. Once he's in the final stand, two more ogres will spawn in the front of the ship. Go ahead and kill these guys and get two people ready to stand inside these bombs. Once you see the message pop up again that Oryx is calling upon the darkness, have these players step inside their bombs. And again, once they see their name, go back into the aura and finish Oryx off for good. And congratulations, you finished King's Fall. Try to do things a little bit differently on this one, since I wasn't going to go ahead and cover the transitional puzzles. If you would like for me to cover those areas still, I can go ahead and do that no problem. Just go ahead and leave a comment below. Other than that, if you all enjoyed this short little video, as always, I enjoy making it for you. If you like what I do and want to see more, please like and subscribe to the channel. It inspires me to make more. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace, and have a good one. And good luck everyone running the raid. I hope you all get your touch of malice on your very first run. Bye.